If you're anything like me, you love use use effect. I personally love use use effect. I love it so much that I used it four times in the same component. But truth be told, this component was written three years ago and I'm almost certain this amount of use effect is absolutely unnecessary. So in this video, I have decided to walk with you through the challenges of you might not need an effect article from React Dev and see different kind of situations when you would use use effect, but in reality, you don't have to. So the very first example will be the data transformation without use effect. So here we have a very simple to-do application that has some input, some list of to-dos, some of which are completed, the amount of to-dos left, and the toggle to switch between the completed and all the to-dos. So here's unchanged version of that example. And here we see three use effect, a lot of use states, and also some beautiful anti-patterns of React when you set the JSX into use state. So first of all, we have visible to-dos, which is the collection that is get mapped. Then those visible to-dos, they are set through use effect and they are preserved through the use state. Then we have also active to-dos that are also set through the use effect and preserved inside the use state. And finally, we have this anti-pattern I have mentioned when we create the piece of JSX and we store it in the use state through the use effect. And I can tell you already, all of that is completely unnecessary. And all this code, unfortunately, will be written most probably only by the person who learned about the React hooks, but didn't learn about how React rendering works. Because the only part of this code that will trigger the rendering will be show active use state and to do's themselves. Let's deal with active to do's first. So active to do's, they do not require neither use state, no use effect to be set because active to do's can be easily derived from the normal to do's by just filtering to do's that are not completed. And every time the to do's collection will be updated by another to do, active to do's will be recalculated in the same rendering phase. If by any means this filtering could be too expensive, you can always wrap them in the use memo, but don't wrap in the use memo just because. Do it only if you have measured that the recalculation of active to do's is indeed expensive. Then we're ready to get rid of this nonsense and this anti-pattern about setting footer by just removing the use state, removing the use effect, and just moving all of that inside the footer itself, because the footer is simply visualization of the length of the active to-dos we have just redefined. The final piece to handle is the visible to-dos that once again, don't require neither use state, no use effect. So visible to-dos again can be just derived from those states. So whenever show active, we only show active to-dos collection. Otherwise we show to-dos collection. And to demonstrate that it works, I have this app fixed example where again, we see one to do's left, we can toggle between them and we see everything as before. The second example is exactly the same example and we're gonna talk about caching the calculation without use effect. So it's literally the same example. The code is exactly the same with the only difference is that the calculation of visible to do's is moved to a separate function called get visible to do's. Every time this function is called, we get a console log. The problem is following. We know that we can get rid of that use state and use effect and just call get visible to do's in the rendering of the component to effectively get the same result. And it will be perfectly fine with the only nuance because our input is a controlled component. Every time we're gonna type a symbol there, text will be changed, meaning that to-do list component will be re-rendered, meaning that visible to-dos will be recalculated. And they don't have to be recalculated while we type in, in the input box. So in order to overcome this situation, it is another use case for using things like use memo. In the previous example, I said to you that don't use use memo if you didn't measure that the calculation is expensive. And then in this case, I would argue that it's still not necessary to use use memo. But at the same time, it's also unnecessary to recalculate those visible to-dos until the to-dos collection change. 
meaning that in this case you could argue that you know that your component will be rendered a lot because of the controlled component input and so that using memo could be justified here that we effectively want to recalculate visible to do's only when the to do's or show active changes and so now since we wrapped in the use memo we can type as much as we like and then it doesn't re-render until we change the show active flag or we add a new to-do. The third example is about dealing with the following problem. We have a tab component showing some users and then some input form and then following thing happen. If we just click on the users here on those tabs, then the data changes in the form below, but that's because edit contact has use effect that will re-render the edit contact component every time saved contact or when the saved contact property changes. And I can tell you that in this code I have written three years ago, re-rendering component based on change properties and using use effect for that was one of the main reasons where I really didn't understood how React rendering works. And that's why I used use effect because I didn't know the, any better way for achieving that. But in reality, there is a better way. But first of all, let's get rid of the use effect first. So now we have removed that use effect. So if we switch now between the tabs, the form below doesn't change. Why? What happens in, in React is that normally React preserves the state when the same component is rendered in the same spot. And, and this is a very tricky thing that happened to me personally at, at least a few times in my life before. And I used to handle it through use effect, of course. But the better way or the correct way to handle that is to use a key property. If we say here key selected ID, then whenever we click now between the components, this edit contact will render because key will be different every time we change the contact, which is will be basically correct. And we achieve the same thing we wanted, but without any use effect. The main purpose of key is to hint React whether the given component is the same or is it a different component. It tells the React that it effectively should be kind of a different component. One last final example where we might not need use effect will be from the code that I have shown in the previous video where I talk about React interview I had a couple of times. So here what we have is that we have a counter that changes the counts and then we have a collection of planets from the Star Wars universe and then whenever the counter changes we fetch a new set of planets. And this is this is the code I have written in that video, supposedly in that interview. And a couple of people rightfully questioned that I don't really need use effect for that. And I absolutely agree with them. You kind of don't need use effect. And in reality, this code could have been written like this. On the button click, we can fetch the data based on the current counter and then update both the counter and the planets. And since it's already quite verbose, it's even better to extract it in a separate function. And now it looks nice. The only thing here would be that now I had to change my initial count. In this example, I started from one because I had use effect. So I started from the first page and I knew that it will be loaded because of the use effect. So when the code was moved to a button on clicked handler, I had to adjust my count to start from zero, which could mean that I would need to kind of reconsider maybe some design choice of my website. So what I'm trying to say here that you don't need use effect if you want to trigger a fetch to post or put some data. But if you want to get some data, you still might need to use use effect. And of course, some people would say like, do you just use React query or blah, blah, blah. Sure, but React query was not invented to get rid of use effects because React query uses use effect under the hood. React query solves the problem of providing you with the custom hooks with stale while revalidate caching strategy. So you don't have to write your less sophisticated custom hooks. I really recommend you to read the documentation on you might not need an effect from the React Dev. And, and I personally will roll up my sleeves and try to get rid of 
all of those use effects that I have added three years ago. Thank you for watching and until the next time.